As more countries prepare to reopen, China is still cautiously easing restrictions with a new normal. Well, China's quarterly GDP plummeted by 6.8 percent, the first contraction since the country began releasing figures back in 1992. April's economic data showed industrial productions fell by 1.1 percent. Retail sales fell by 19 percent and investment in fixed assets fell by 16.1 percent. Imports and exports were down by 6.4 percent. But the country is taking steps to resume what they're calling a normal life. While some taking precautions, a new report from the China Beige Book showed that of more than 500 companies surveyed, 91 percent had reopened by late April, but only 42 percent are operating at more than half their capacity. Well, for more, we bring in Dean of Miami Business School, John Falch. Uh, John, some analysts predict a strong recovery once companies return to normal. Could China bounce back quicker than we thought? Uh, probably not uh, until the uh, third quarter. Uh, as you uh, correctly pointed out, although 91 percent of companies and businesses have reopened, uh, only 40 percent roughly are operating at full capacity. Uh, the fact of the matter is that many Chinese consumers uh, are uh, basically without uh, sufficient funds relative to last year to really reactivate the uh, consumer economy. Uh, and many of them are skittish, uh, worried about the uh, worried about not having enough savings uh, to be able to shore them up if there's a second wave. So I think that uh, predictions about a rapid bounce back are probably a little bit overdone. Well, and, and some European countries are also following suit. They're beginning to lift some lockdowns, easing restrictions cautiously. Is there something to be learned from China in terms of how they're lifting these restrictions and now, for example, implementing that social distancing becoming a new norm? Well, China is obviously a pretty tightly controlled uh, economy and a tightly controlled country. And there does seem to be a national approach to uh, the overall opening of the economy. Even though there is regional variation, uh, there is a national oversight to that regional variation. So I think that there's probably more of a systematic approach in China, which may give, ironically, may give it a little bit of benefit in terms of upping the chances of reopening successfully without uh, inducing uh, second wave effects. And that's something that uh, China is cautiously looking at as well as uh, places, countries in Europe that the are not opening up too quickly where they're still keeping some places closed. But in the last decade, we've seen the world become heavily reliant on China for manufacturing because uh, it's much cheaper. Now, it, is it really that easy for countries to, to sort of ditch China and, and manufacture their own products? It depends what you're talking about. If you're talking about low-tech products, obviously those can be migrated to uh, a Vietnam, uh, for example, quite easily. Uh, if you're talking about very high-tech products, uh, chances are that the U.S., for example, probably has kept a pretty tight grip on those items that are on the cutting edge. It's the middle range of products where China has excelled as being the factory to the world. And as more consumers in the U.S. and Europe are poorer as a result of the uh, virus, they're going to be looking even more for value for money. And the value for money can really only be provided by a, an experienced low-cost manufacturer, uh, and that experience is still in China. So for all of the wishful thinking about let's renationalize production uh, right. back within our own borders to reduce dependency, the fact of the matter is China is still where the, the best value products can probably be sourced. And that's something that... Uh Angela Merkel has also said uh, from Germany that that's, that's not going to just happen overnight. But I do want to turn to a last quick answer. Now, President Trump, favor, now his favorite is a threat is its tariffs. He's floating the idea of imposing these new tariffs on China to punish for what we, he's calling the mishandling of the coronavirus. Are we looking at another possible trade war? We just signed the phase one trade deal a few months ago. Well, we're in an election year, so all bets are off in terms of um, restraint. 
Uh, I think that the global economy would be much better served if there was very little talk about further uh, tariff escalation. Uh, but in an election year, that's become the, the way in which uh, you beat up on China. And uh, that's the, uh, the way in which we're going to live, I think, for the next six or seven months. But I certainly hope that we won't see an escalation. And this is really just uh, uh, posturing. This is really a threat uh, without substance, because the global economy uh, and individual national economies do depend upon uh, a reintegration right. uh, and a de-escalation of these national tariff uh, wars. That's really what's moving the market right now. Uh, John Quelch, Dean of the Miami Herbert Business School, thank you.